Hello, 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 everybody. I hope you guys have had a wonderful week this week. This week, we're doing something a little different than my past videos. We are doing a true crime version, true crime edition, however you want to phrase that. Uh, today's story is about Mary Flora Bell. She was born May 26th, 1957 to Betty McCricket. That is such a fun last name to say. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard that last name before. Um, so she was married or married. She was born to Betty McCricket. Betty was 16 or 17 when she gave birth to Mary. Betty was also a sex worker or prostitute, however you want to phrase it. So she didn't really have a stable income coming in for, for her and her baby girl. Um, and so she would go a lot on business trips. I think she was just kind of trying to get any work that she could to be able to support the two of them. I read that she tried giving Mary up for adoption, but Betty's sister wouldn't let her. I don't know why. Honestly, it probably would have been better for the both of them if that's what would have happened, but it didn't. So, um, Mary grew up in a chaotic household. Her mom was hardly there. And when she was there, she was abusing Mary physically and mentally. So Mary wasn't like all the other kids in her class. And she was kind of known as being like an outsider and just, just not like everyone else. And I don't think she had a lot of friends. So between the abuse she was getting at home and, you know, not really having a social life and having friends and people in her life who truly loved her and cared about her. Um, it, it did some damage. Um, so, but we'll get to that in a second. So when Mary was a little girl, she had some incidents come up with other kids in the neighborhood. Um, there was a little boy that she, she played with and one day he fell off a roof just on accident. She was 10 and he was three or four and the parents just said you know what i mean they're kids things happen it was an accident and that's completely understandable you know things like that happen you know kids just playing on a roof and then one falling off that's normal um and then the next day actually three moms went to the police and told the police that mary had tried strangling all three of their daughters that day Police didn't really think anything of it. They probably thought, you know, these girls are just roughhousing, just playing. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure this 10-year-old little girl wasn't trying to kill your daughters. You know, like, we'll just let it go. There were no charges filed against Mary. So the day before Mary's 11th birthday, she was playing with a little boy. He was three. His name is Martin Brown. I don't know why all of her friends were toddlers, but you know, here we are. <laughs> um, and they were playing alone in an abandoned house, which again, I'm reading this and I'm like, what? <laughs> like, whose parents lets their kids play in an abandoned house together? I don't know. Especially when your child is three years old. I don't get that, but we're moving on. So they were playing and all of a sudden, Mary started strangling Martin and he ended up dying. So she ends up running from the scene. I don't know if, you know, she was scared, if she didn't care, but she, she ran away. She comes back a couple hours later to see if the body's still there. And there's two other little boys there who have discovered the body. They've called the police. So the police come out and police... The only thing that they could see was there was some blood and saliva on Martin's face. And then there was an empty bottle of painkillers laying next to him. But that's an important thing because when Mary was little, she almost overdosed on painkillers. I'm assuming they were her mother's. She got a hold of them, almost overdosed. Um, she also fell out of a window when she was little and survived. So the first little boy fell out of a window and luckily thank god survived and now this little boy has been strangled but she put an empty bottle of painkillers next to him 
So it's almost like, you know, she just wanted the police to think that this three-year-old grabbed painkillers, went to an abandoned house by himself and ate them all and died. And that's what they thought. They just ruled it an accident. You know, he grabbed the painkillers, he swallowed them. He's a little kid, kids grab things. That's what happened. Okay, that doesn't explain why this little boy is in a house by himself, but okay. Uh, so the next day, Mary went to Martin Brown's parents' home and she asked to see Martin. Well, the mother, you know, assumed that Mary didn't know he had passed away. So she informed Mary that her son had passed away the day before. And Mary told her that she knew he passed away. She wanted to see him in his coffin. Well, I think any mom would do this. Uh, the mom wasn't very happy when Mary said that and slammed the door in her face. But it said that when Mary said it, she was just almost not not gleeful, but there was like no remorse when she was saying those things. And I feel like that's a huge red flag. And But again, maybe people in the community just thought Mary was just odd because of her upbringing, you know, and she just didn't have social skills. That's probably what people thought. So anyways, she started bragging that she killed this little boy in class and people didn't believe her. They thought she was just attention seeking. Um, but she also said that she was going to kill again and no one believed her. So Mary did have one friend, Norma Bell. They weren't related, but they have the same last name. Uh, she and Norma went to a nursery school one evening and they broke in and they vandalized it. And they left notes everywhere saying, you know, we're gonna kill again. And basically Mary was just admitting to the murder of little Martin Brown. Well, the next day police were called, came out, they didn't think anything of it. They just thought it was a morbid prank, which I couldn't find if she wrote her name down or if she just wrote, I did it, I'm gonna kill again. But it's very suspicious if she would have written her name that they wouldn't have done anything about it because she's, you know, she's caused chaos in the community before and there have been people coming to the police before then or before this moment saying, hey, this little girl tried strangling my kid. My son got pushed out of a window. I mean, I don't think, I don't know if those parents went to the police, but things have happened in the past. How are people not connecting the dots with this? But again, maybe they just thought because of her, her upbringing, you know, we'll just let it go. She's just trying to get attention. So... The nursery school installed cameras, which, yeah, you should probably do that since you were vandalized. And that wasn't the first time they'd been van vandalized. So they installed cameras. Well, the next day, Norma and Mary were caught loitering around the property. So police were called again to look at the cameras, to look at the, the videotapes, and they didn't do anything about it. Like, you know what, they're, they're not doing anything wrong. You know, they're just standing out here loitering. I mean, that doesn't prove that they, they did anything. So they let it go. Well, two months later, Mary and Norma were playing with a little boy, Brian Howe. He was three and they ended up strangling him as well, strangling him to death. But this time it went a little, it, it went actually a lot farther than it did with Martin Brown. So with Brian Howe, after they strangled him, they cut off some of his hair, they cut his thighs, and they mutilated his genitals. They're 11 years old and he was three. I don't know about Norma and I don't know about her upbringing. I know Mary didn't have a great upbringing, but oh my gosh, you guys, what? Like, it makes me wonder if she got strangled as a child and that's why this was like her go-to, you know? Um, or maybe because she was just little and she didn't, ugh, I don't know, I don't know. I've never killed anyone and I'm, I've never wanted to, but I can't understand it, but... It just makes me wonder why the strangulation, you know, two times in a row. Um, 
And then she went even further the second time, which I, I don't get. I don't know. Maybe she was trying to prove a point that she's been hurting and, you know, no one seems to care. I don't know. But after that happened, Norma and Mary ran away and they got Brian's sister and they told Brian, or I'm sorry, they told Brian's sister that they couldn't find him and she, you know, was going to help look for him. So they're looking, looking, Mary ends up pointing to where Brian's body is laying. He's laying, his body was laying behind some concrete blocks and her and Brian's sister's like, no, he wouldn't be back there. Like, cause she just thinks he's hiding. She thinks he's maybe lost, whatever. So anyways, they end up going to police and police end up finding the body behind the concrete blocks, which... Um, can we connect the dots, please? These two little girls were just playing with this little boy. They pointed out where his body probably was lying. And yes, yeah, still no one's no one's connecting the dots here. And no one believes that they, they were probably the suspects. Yeah, okay. It's fine. It's fine. Um, anyway, so after this happened, the community was extremely distraught because now in two months, two little boys have died. So because of the severity of the crime, all the details weren't given to the public, um, especially because he was a, he was a child. So they're not going to give those details. Um, but they started questioning children in the community because they noticed that he was strangled, but there wasn't a lot of force given. So they assumed that a child is probably the one who who killed Brian. So after the body had been at the coroner's office for a while, it, it was his his blood had cooled down. Brian's blood had cooled. The coroner noticed that there was a mark on Brian's chest and it was a scratched in M. For Mary, Mary Bell, she's the one who did it. How is no one catching on to this? But okay, I guess it's too easy. So Mary and Norma ended up getting called in for questioning and they act super weird. I mean, they were laughing, being giggly. I mean, it just wasn't normal behavior for a 10 and 11 year old, that age range to be acting if you're being asked about a little boy's murder, you know. Most kids that age would be terrified. They wouldn't want to be there. That would be traumatizing. So that was suspicious to police, but they didn't have enough evidence to convict them of anything. So they let them go. Well, at Brian's funeral, Mary was caught lurking around the house, lurking around the area where the funeral was being held and watching his coffin being buried and laughing, rubbing her hands together, just acting super creepy and people noticed. So they told the police. So Mary and Norma get called back into the police station to be questioned. And um, Mary tried blaming another little boy. She didn't give a name, but she said that she thought this, you know, she'd seen this other little boy playing with Brian and he was holding a pair of rusty scissors. So he must have been the one to, to kill Brian. I don't know if you remember, but earlier I said that police didn't give out all the evidence because Brian was a little boy and they weren't going to give all the details of his death out into the public. So that wasn't public knowledge that scissors were used on Brian. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner, folks. Sorry, Mary Flora Bell. You're going to jail. Mm. So Norma ended up confessing. So did Mary. I mean, they became very cooperative with police, but Mary tried blaming most of it on Norma. Mary's a great friend. Um, so police didn't buy it. They ended up charging both of the girls. Well, Norma ended up not getting convicted of anything. They just thought she got in with the wrong crowd, which, yeah, you could say that again. At the same time, you were there, Norma. Um, You shouldn't get off without, you know, any, any consequences. That's not okay. Anyways, so when Mary was put on trial, the prosecutor told the court 
that Mary murdered those two little boys, quote, solely for the pleasure and excitement of killing, end quote. That is, so, I feel like that would be really hard to say about an 11 year old. Um, I feel like that would be, that would be chilling. I feel like if you were sitting in that courtroom and he's talking about an 11 year old, I mean, that that's scary. Like I would be scared, a feared. <laughs> okay. Um, no, but really like that's scary. And the British press said that she was quote evil born end quote. Which, you know, I mean, those aren't really things that you want to be described as. So, sorry, Mary. Maybe you should have been a better person. So, Mary ended up having an indeterminate sentence, which just means that the powers that be were going to decide when she was able to leave prison. Yeah, that's not something you want to hear. She ended up going to prison for 12 years and got out when she was 23. So, when Mary got out of prison... She ended up having to get a whole new identity because the press were just following her everywhere. She got out of prison in 1980 and she ended up having a little girl in 1984. Well, her daughter didn't know about Mary's past until she was 14 because she ended up reading it in a tabloid because the press got a hold of her story and ended up, you know, leaking it. So yeah, I'm sure that was a fun conversation having with her daughter. But anyways, now she lives in a secret place with her daughter. They both live anonymously and basically just have to live in hiding, which is really sad. And I just feel so bad for her daughter too. You know, I mean, what kind of life is that? But anyways, that's the uplifting story of Mary Flora Bell. I really hope that, you know, she has remorse for what she did and that she has asked for forgiveness and has become a better person and has grown and maybe hopefully gotten the care that she needs, you know? Um, Cause yeah, I mean, she needed a lot of help. She needed love and therapy and even more love because she was clearly very neglected. And I think she was just trying to show people like, hi, I'm here. I'm sad. I'm hurt. No one loves me. So I'm going to hurt these two other little kids just so maybe you'll understand my pain. Also, not condoning her behavior. I am not saying this is okay in any in any shape or form. But I'm just saying that I just, you know, I just feel really terribly for her. I don't really know what happened to her mom. Um, it just kind of sounds like Mary went to prison and now she's on her own with her daughter. So, yeah. Thanks for watching guys. I'm sorry if this was all over the place. It was my first true crime story. It is hard remembering all those details, okay? This is like the 10th time I've recorded this, so you're welcome. I do my best for you guys. You're what keeps me going. Okay, that's dramatic. I do appreciate you guys watching. Seriously, seriously, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. If you want me to do another true crime story, please let me know in the comments. If you don't want me to, then keep it to yourself. I don't need any negative comments here. No. If you have any stories you want me to talk about or research, let me know in the comments below. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, Por Favor. And I will see you guys next week. Bye!